dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we are discussing the topic, Qiyam al-Layl, the night's prayer. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. The next question relates really to the length of time, the length that one should make the night prayer. Is there any indications or from the Quran Sunnah relating to the length? There are various hadith talking about it and the length can vary, but the Sunnah of the Prophet was that he used to pray usually for long hours. And the hadith in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Tahajjud, hadith number 1135, that Asaba says that I joined the Prophet one night while he was offering the Qiyam al -Layl. And it was so long that the evil thought came to me. So when he was asked, what was the evil thought? He felt like sitting down and keeping the Prophet standing. That means it was so long. There's another hadith in Sahih Muslim, point number one, in the Book of Salah, hadith number 1697, where it says, that once the Sahaba, he prays the Qiyamul Layl along with Prophet Sallallahu and the Prophet started reciting Surah Baqarah. And the Sahaba says that when we finished about 100 verses, he thought the Prophet would bow down, but the Prophet continued. And later on he thought that another after some verses he would bow down, but he continued. Then he thought that okay, maybe after Surah Baqarah ends, the Prophet would bow down, but after Surah Baqarah ends, he continues reciting. He recites Surah Nisa. And that again is 176 verses. And after that ends, he recites Surah Al Imran. And he continues leisurely. That means Prophet used to pray for hours. Imagine Surah Baqarah, Surah Nisa, Surah Al Imran. It is about all put together, at least five juz. Imagine, only in that one rakah. So this was the length at many times. But there's no fixed length. A person can vary as much as well. The Prophet always preferred praying longer. Further, it's mentioned in a Sahih Hadith of Sunnah Abu Dawud, volume number one in the Book of Salah, Hadith number 873. The beloved Prophet, one of the Sahaba says, that when he used to pray, he started the Qiyam al-Layl, and he, after Surah Fatiha, he read Surah Bakhra. Then he went in the Ruku in the bowing position. And when he was in the bowing position, he stayed there as long as he was standing before. Then he got up, he put his head straight, and he was in the standing position till as much time as he was in the bowing position. Uh -huh. Then he goes into sujood. And the Prophet was, but naturally he said that he said, Sumar bin Nazim in the ruku, glory be to Allah. And then in the sujood he said, Sumar bin Allah, Glory be to Allah who is the highest. And he was in the sujood position as long as he was in the standing position. And in between the two sujood also, he was as long as he was in the sujood position. Saying that all these positions, khayam, the ruku, the standing after ruku, the sujood, and the sitting between the two sujood, he used to take his own time and it used to be long. That means the khayam layl was very long. There's another hadith in Sahih Muslim, volume number four. Hadith number 6774, Hadith Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. She says that the Prophet, while offering Qayyam layl the night prayer, he used to stand for such long hours that his feet used to swell. So his wife, Hadith Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. She says that all your past and the future sins have been forgiven. So why do you ask for forgiveness so much? Why do you pray for so long? So he said, shouldn't I be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So all the more reason he says should be thankful. So the Prophet normally used to pray for long hours. So the longer you offer the Qiyamul Layl, the better it is. Well, may Allah give us strength to utilize the night's prayer with length, like you've uh, described the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa to have done. Alhamdulillah. Dr. Zakir, is it better, according to Quran and Sunnah, 
to offer the Qiyamilayt individually or in congregation? There are hadith which say that a person can offer Qiyamul Layl individually, also in congregation. Both accepted and all the references I gave, most of them the Prophet used to offer together. And I gave some references when the Sahaba used to join the Prophet, so both are there. But as far as which is better, but natural, the various hadith in Sayyid Bukhari saying that if you offer in congregation, you get 27 times more sawab. You know, the two hadith say that. And further, as far as the Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan is concerned, there's a hadith in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Tarawi, hadith number 2012, where once the Prophet, he goes to the mosque, and there he finds that people are offering in the groups. So he offers Salah, the Qiyamul Layl, at night, and many people join behind him. Next day, the news spreads. And the next night, the full mosque is filled with people. The third night, again, when the Prophet comes to offer the Qiyamul Layl, the mosque is overflowing with people. In the congregation, but naturally. The fourth night, again, it is overfilled. But the Prophet he knows people are waiting out again to join him for Qiyamul Layl. He does not go out purposely. And during Fajr, after offering the Fajr Salah, after the Salah is over, and he says that not that I was not aware that the people were waiting for me for the Qiyamul Layl, but I did not want to make it compulsory for you. I don't want people to think that it's compulsory to offer Qiyamul Layl, lest it would be difficult for you. So purposely Prophet gave a break make it known to the people that it's not fard to offer Qiyamul Layl and he didn't want to make it difficult for the people. But from the hadith you come to know that offering Jama is better. And there's another hadith in Sunan Abu Dawud, volume number one, in the book of Salah, hadith number 1370. One is the Prophet was offering Qiyamul Layl and he finishes and when he's about to get up, people say that why don't you pray more? So the Prophet says that anyone who prays till the Imam finishes, if he prays with the Imam till he finishes, it is as though he has prayed for the full night. So from these two hadith we come to know that offering Qiyamul Layl in congregation is better than offering individually, irrespective of whether it's in Ramadan or outside Ramadan. Okay, thank you, Doctor. And actually there's another issue which has come up in my own research. And it relates to the fact that many people consider it a bidah to go into congregation and pray the Qiyam al-Layl. And this started in the Khalifa of Omar radiallahu anhu, may Allah be pleased with him. Could you comment on this? People have a misconception that Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he was the one who started this congregation Salah Qiyam al-Layl during Ramadan. It's a misconception. But in fact, it is he who revived the Sunnah of the Prophet. As I mentioned earlier, in the Hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of Tarawi, Hadith number 2012, that the Prophet was the person who offered Qiyamul Layl, people joined him in congregation and he allowed it. Then later on, next night, the whole mosque was filled, and third night it was overflowing, and fourth night didn't come out purposely. From this Hadith we come to know that it was the Prophet who started this, and Sunnah of the Prophet. But at the time of Hazrat Abu Bakr, my life with him, there were hardly any people who prayed that. Even in the starting of the Caliphate of Hazrat Umar, it was the same thing, my life with him. It further mentioned the Hadith of Sayyid Bukhari, volume number three, in the book of Tarawi, Hadith number 2010. The Sahaba says that he was walking along with Hazrat Umar, one of the Muslim life with him, and he finds that people were praying individually, and some people were praying in a small group. So, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, he gathered all the people and he said, let's make one jamaah. And he appointed Ubay bin Kaif, may Allah be pleased with him, to lead the salah. And everyone prayed behind him. And later on, when he comes back after a few nights, he finds that people are praying in one congregation. And then he comments, it is 
preferable to pray when the people are sleeping than what they are praying now. Because, you know, they prayed immediately after Isha Salah, as I mentioned earlier. So praying the Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan, what people call as Tarawi, it's preferable to pray in the last one third of night. But if you pray early also, it's no problem. Now coming back to the question, when he said that it's an excellent bidda, people misunderstand the statement and they say, oh, that means the bidda can be good. Bidda is normally in the Sharia, means an innovation in the religion. But here, Hazrat Umar, may Allah be with him, he never used it as a bidda in the religion. There's nothing like bidda which is good. You know, because it's mentioned in the hadith of Sai Muslim, volume number one, hadith number 1885, that all innovations in the religion are wrong and they lead to error. And other hadith says that all innovations lead to hellfire. So all innovations are wrong. Now, based on this hadith, when Omar Malai Pridin said that it's an excellent bidah, so people normally say the bidah can be good and can be bad, good bidah is allowed. So what he really meant here was bidah in the linguistic term not Bidha in the religion, because in linguistic term Bidha means something which is new. So at that time, people did not pray in one congregation. So he reminded them of the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. So it was going back to the Sunnah of the Prophet, but for that time it was Bidha linguistically, it was something new. So it doesn't mean that Hazrat Umar, may Allah be with him, he knew it's something in the religion. He took the people back to the Sunnah of the Prophet. For example, if I go to a city, where people are wearing the trousers below the ankle. And if I say that, you know, wearing above the ankle is the sunnah of the Prophet. But it's a bidda for that time. Because people, it's new for them. They don't know about it. So it's bidda for that time, but it's going back to the sunnah of the Prophet, wearing the trousers above the ankle. So people misunderstand the statement of Omar Mila, please with him, talking about new for that time and for that place and for the people. But actually, it's going back to the Prophet. So it is not what Hazrat Umar may Allah be with him, he innovated it. He told the people that this is what the Prophet did. And there are several such examples. Many Muslims, you know, temporary marriage done by some groups of Muslims. The Prophet had prohibited that. Hazrat Umar may Allah be pleased with him. He knew about it. So during the seventh hijri of the book, he said it is wrong. So people think he imposed it. But he knew the Prophet said it was haram. The temporary marriage, you know, it's called as muta. So just because he implemented the sunnah, which very few people knew at that time, and he was there when the Prophet said that muta, temporary marriage is haram, people think that he brought it into the deen. It's going back to the sunnah of the Prophet. Hope that clarifies. Oh, Jazakallah khair, Dr. Zakir. Dr. Zakir, I would call upon you to resolve one of the most common disputes in the Muslim Ummah during the month of Ramadan regarding the number of rakat that are prayed in the Taraweh or the Qiyam layl or the night prayer. Is it eight or should it be twenty? <laughs> Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number one, in the Book of Salah, hadith number 472, he said, that when a person asks that how should you offer the Qiyamul Layl? So the Prophet said that he should offer Qiyamul Layl in two rakat, followed by two rakat, followed by two rakat, followed by two rakat and so on. And when he fears that dawn is approaching, he should offer one rakat. So all the rakat become bitter, become odd. That means you can pray as many as you wish. Later on have a one number, an odd number, so that everything becomes odd. So as far as the number of rakat are concerned, you can pray as many as you wish. But as far as the practice of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is concerned, this mentioned in Sayyid Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Tahajjud, Hadith number 1147, the Hadith Aisha, may be pleased with her, she says that the Prophet, while offering Qiyamul Layl in Ramadan, used to always offer 11 rakat, not more than 11 rakat. And this is to do even other months. Well, dear brothers and sisters, inshallah, we'll meet soon after a short break. It is Ramadan.